How's it going everybody? Alright, what is then just finished, so let's go for a quick rundown of what we will get this season. No long intro, as the video will probably be long enough. Here's the overview of dates for the different content pieces and events. I won't bother with events, you all know them already. So, next week on the 15th, the new season starts, and with it come the TND and Valkyrie reworks, as well as a bunch of other small bug fixes or changes or buffs, nerfs, whatever. I'll go over those in just a second. What we also get is this Black Prior Hero skin here, just like we predicted. Name is Commander Ravier. Ravier, what, whatever. The skin is female gender locked. I say this only because people will ask in the comments again. If you have an issue with gender lock, go complain somewhere else. It's not going to change. And having to hear it every single time something even remotely resembling a female gets released is getting awfully tiring. Yeah, in an ideal world, we could choose. But it's not happening now, is it? But yeah, the skin is clearly heavily influenced by the Leper King Baldwin. You decide for yourself whether you like it or not. Let's go straight into the patch notes without much fuss. Lawbringer is getting the most generic changes. His forward dodge bash is now a legion kick. And the side dodge one is the same as Conqueror's at 533. Recovery wise, it got nerfed to 700, which is the standard value. No more shoving and parrying dodge attacks. That's gone. So there you have it, your long awaited Lawbring above. Enjoy it. Moving on to Nusha. The deflect is now unblockable and damage got reduced to 20. This makes it always guaranteed. The side and forward dodge attacks are now enhanced, and the forward dodge one got a variable input window. Without testing, I don't know whether this will affect her chase potential, but in theory, it should make it a little better. The interesting part among these changes here is certainly the change to her side heavy weapon trajectory. Nusha didn't really have bad hitboxes to begin with, so she might actually be able to hit quite a few people around her now. I'm looking forward to testing this a little more in depth, but it does sound promising. Then some changes to Peacekeeper's dodge attack. She got a dodge recovery cancel out of it, but only on miss. That one's at 400 ms. And then an overall 500 ms recovery from what the notes here say. I will test all the values here and compare the current live version to next week's patch. 700 ms seems a little low for it to be guard breakable. As many of you know, if you dodge PK's dodge attack, you can guard break her. These changes should remove that. Then the reposting stab, which is her deflect follow-up. That one has medium hit stun now and a 400 ms recovery on hit. This should bring it in line with shamans, which means she has an effective way to deal with most hyper armored follow-ups. Not all, but most of them. I will show you examples of this once we get our hands on this. She will be able to repost stab them and then deflect a follow-up attack almost immediately after. Moving on to Raider, first of all, a stamina nerf, his stamina pool is down to 120. I will pretty much rebel against any stamina nerf, and this one is no different. It will not fix the spam complaints, so trying to appease the masses like that is just not gonna happen. Then the damage nerfs, quite significant ones. I know we've been saying damage needs to be lowered overall, so fair enough, but this cannot be a change that happens one by one to heroes, just like the stamina stuff. This needs to be a big sweeping change. Now Raider, that had a solid position in the meta, not too strong, not too weak, suddenly gets shafted like that. Especially the zone attack, which is objectively worse than many other finishers in quite a few categories, only dealing 28? That seems weird to me. It is particularly peculiar since Magi didn't receive any damage nerfs whatsoever, which leads me to believe that Raider was picked solely because of complaints by the masses. And the same can be said about Parrot, another community favorite. Damage nerfs and increase in the amount of revenge some moves feed. And then her side dodge attack as well only does 12 damage. So all of this won't address the complaints she receives. Nothing will change. The damage of the dodge attack is not the issue people are complaining about. This is not the correct approach, but Ubisoft has to know this. 
and they also know that nerfing the recovery cancel aspect will not sit well with many others. She's basically a revenge feeding machine now, random pirates in your own team will be an even bigger nightmare now. Then the chain link change is to fix an issue where externally hitting someone with certain moves would confirm the follow up pistol grab. I'll show you next week. Moving on to a bunch of miscellaneous changes. Warlord's Hype Armor is now at 100 MS into the finisher heavies. Slowly but surely, Warlord is amassing buffs again. He's already sitting pretty, and people underestimate the hero. Let's see how long he can keep that streak of buffs. Then Centurion, he can now punch after wins. So, backstab light into bash is a thing now. They also changed the minimum and maximum charge time of the jabs. I'll do some more testing here, as currently there are quite a few complaints about singular dodge timings with some dodge attacks, and they should definitely fix that. It might also be possible to much easier hit sense hype armor on bash and get two attacks in. Well, we'll see. Then Gladiator's Toe Stab unbalances out of stamina opponents again. Seems a little excessive, but why not? Let's try it out. Kyushin's Kazistan's unblockable top heavy now only costs 12 stamina. Good, it's a start. Kyushin is so insanely stamina hungry that I don't really see this too much. He needs the Kazistan's block cost removed. Fujin cuts need to cost... I don't know how much, but less. This is a first baby step. The journey is much longer. Then Jeonhu's heavy finishers nerfed to 28 damage, down from 32. This is quite a no-brainer and a welcome change. Like I said with Raider, don't single out only some, or just all the ones that might be a little too high, on a per attack basis. Just because it's a finisher unblockable, doesn't mean they need to do the exact same amount of damage. We've covered this at length on multiple occasions. Then Shinobi's kick only pins for 800 ms now. I have no idea what that's supposed to do. The ranged heavy after the kick is what's used to confirm teammate attacks, not the kick itself. Maybe I'm missing something here, but from these notes, I don't see this doing anything. And then the parry repost does for less damage. Once again, good change. And then the final change of these overall ones is a console only one. And I'm quite happy for you guys getting this. You now have an FOV slider. I know that me and many other content creators have included this in tips videos and best settings videos and all that stuff. Consolians, the first thing you do next Thursday when you log in is go and change your FOV to maxi. It should be 90. I think. You will not regret this, you will have a much better experience and more oversight of a team fight, so you won't know what hit you. Or the opposite. Now you will know what actually did you. So that's a great change. Oh, one more thing actually. Executions no longer put you out of luck. This has been a property that's been different per execution with no clear rule really. No longer will you eat a full out of luck punish when executing near somebody. On one hand that's great, but I'm sure some might say that you need to pick the right time to execute and choose the right execution so this won't happen. I can see that side as well. So overall, I'm not as hyped about all these changes as the last two times, but since we now get them more often, who knows, maybe we'll see some of them reverted again, like a season-long live testing round. But speaking of testing round, the patch notes about TND and Valk changes haven't released yet, and JC only briefly talked about TND. TND got his old Dragon Dodge timings back for one. I think most people agreed on this, that it didn't have to fulfill the role other dodge attacks do, especially since he has two different ones anyways. Then the kick got the dodge soft faint back, which from what I could hear when JC explained it, was mostly because many were so used to it and didn't want to learn a new input, meaning having to press one more button. Uh, insane, I know. But this might make the kick a bit too safe. The kick is already amazing now. so. Making it very safe on top might be overdoing it, especially when the reasoning is as I assume it is. We'll see. And then the delay window for the forward dragon dodge got reverted. I remember it being weird, so reverting is good, I guess. But yeah, moving on. More testing grounds. Yormungandus is finally coming. 
That one starts on the 22nd of December. I've been really looking forward to this one and before we look closer, let me just say what an amazing job the mocap team did. We got brand new animations for this rework and it certainly shows. So let's speed run through these. Link to the blog post will be in the description. First of all, no more stamina drain on anything. George is no stamina bully anymore. It doesn't work and abandoning that concept was the best choice here. To knock somebody down to get the hammer slam, you can now use an in-chain faithful bash. Yotun something, <laughs> whatever the name. 800 MS, faintable, and it always knocks down. As you can see, a brand new animation. And heavy finishes, still unblockable, and they still knock people around. You can still wall splat, and additional damage and the top heavy now also do this. Then another new move, a special guard break follow up. Once again, it knocks people around and also gives a wall splat. Plus more damage because of that. Input is a heavy. Yeah, cool idea, but what I'm a little concerned about is the 24 damage of the move. I understand that it needs to be somewhat in line with other guard break punishes, but the 51 damage guard break seem a little excessive. A middle ground needs to be found here, I'd say, but we'll see. That's just my first observation. More new moves. In chain zone. 800 MS, fully armored, faintable, great hitbox and it also does 24 damage. It's not just like in chain but also after finish heavies for example, you'll see in a second. Looks like a great move and I love the concept of in chain zones anyways and I hope we can see this explored even more in future reworks. Damage might be a little high but we'll see, I mean it's 800 MS, right? And Light Open has also got a new animation. JC said that they wanted to make them closer to how the heavies look, so it's harder to distinguish between them. That goal was certainly achieved, but here I can see some complaints happening. George holds the hammer with one hand in the lock-on stance, and then quickly grabs them with both to do the lights. It can look a little janky. We'll see how it looks from the opponent's point of view in a few weeks, when we have a better picture. The finisher lights had the undodgeable property removed. I know that undodgeable lights are something the devs don't particularly like. I personally think that blue attacks should be way more common than they are. But in Yorm's case here, it should work just fine. Bash, in chain zone, and the heavies obviously, they are all faintable, so the mix up will work regardless. And once more, a new Legion kick, or rather, the old bash is now on a forward dodge plus GB input. It also confirms a light opener now. No more stamina drain or knocking people over. Moving on, forward dodge heavy, sped up to 800 MS and hyper armor got adjusted, meaning much early. Hard to tell whether this will have a significant impact. I don't think it looks close enough to the bash to mix people up at higher levels, but who knows. It's rather rare that this works in the first place. Then Guard Break Light and Parry Repost now deal direct damage. With the Guard Break one, you can get that 10 extra damage before throwing someone to the floor that's out of stamina, for example. For normal wall splats, you use your special heavy follow-ups instead. If the Parry Repost confirms another light on top of the already 10 damage, that would be pretty wild. Let's law bring a like damage on heavy fights. So, nope, thank you. And then the last move. A running heavy, a little gimmicky, but whatever, has hyper armor, maybe even pushes people to the side like Zerkus, we'll see. I prefer big sweeping ones, but this one seems like a fun addition. And that's it, while editing this, the patch notes just got released, so I'll link those down below as well. A more in-depth rundown will be done next week when we get our hands on this. Also, let me know which one of the two reworks you want to have a video about first, either Tiendi or Valkyrie. With that said, don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss those videos. I hope this one was helpful. Thanks for watching. Later everybody.